Uh, and the topic today, the topic today to, at Canvas Hour is the beloved speed grader. And uh, Jacob Rinderkinet from uh, Religious Studies is going to walk us through the marvels of the speed grader. Uh, Jacob, thank you very much. Let me turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Just give me a second. I forgot to log in to Zoom on my iPad, so I can show you that too. Oh, that's right. I remember that you, yeah. Okay. Very good. So how is everyone this morning? Are we excited about Canvas? This is, I promise, going to be one of the easier things on Canvas. Um, and I think Canvas is pretty easy in general, but um, let's look at a few things together. Let me share my screen. We'll start with the standard web app. Is everyone seeing this now, what I'm talking about, what I have here? Okay. So when you first log into Canvas, um, your dashboard is probably a familiar setting, a familiar vision at this point. Um, one thing I discovered today, which is not really about the speed grader, but I'm going to tell you because I found it really helpful, um, is that if you click on courses here on the left side and then go to all courses at the bottom, this will allow you to decide which ones show up on your uh, on your dashboard. And all you do is you star or unstar them. Um, because I end up as secondary faculty in about 25 courses a semester, um, mine was getting a little bit unmanageable. So. Just as a side tip, you can star or unstar things here to show up in your dashboard or not. But when you log in, you should show up and see your dashboard like this. Um, and one of my favorite things about Canvas is that it gives me this handy little to-do list on the side here. Um, and so I've made this little course with some things we can look at. And if you click directly on any of these, it will take you to the speed grader. So let's start with a quiz. So when you click into the speed grader, the name of the assignment is up here. Um, you can change that, but you can go directly to that assignment by clicking on it. It will tell you how many you've graded and zero of four, right? This is num and that this is number one of four. And it will tell you whose, um, whose assignment you're on here. You can immediately change between them by clicking on, on these, or you can, you can go left and right through them by using the left and right arrows. Everyone with me so far? Okay. When you are Jacob, in a quiz like this, Jacob, Jacob, you'll notice would be... that I set this quiz up and I'll show you how to do this in a minute um, so that it would auto grade some of these things, right? So it would auto grade this question and tell Anne when she took the quiz that she got this correct, right? You can also set up a auto response to either correct or incorrect or all answers that set, that tells people what gives people immediate feedback after they take their exam. And I'll show you how to do that real quick too. Um, and so when you are in, grading through these, you'll note these were graded already by the system. I forgot to clear this. Um, this will come up like this. And so if we come to one that I have to grade myself, I'm gonna say, um, I'm going to put, I can put comments in, I can grade this for points, um, and I can, and then update scores is how you save. Now, one thing to notice is if you want to go through all of the same question, grade all the question ones, all the question twos, that's how I like to grade. It will, if you just click back and forth <coughs> with these arrows, it will keep the quiz centered on the same question as you go through the students. Does that make sense? And so what I tend to do is I do one all the way through and then two all the way back and then one, three all the way through and four all the way back. And that way, A, I don't necessarily notice whose quiz question I'm grading and I am more consistent on my essay grading. So you can add here, those are comments that show up on the particular, tied to the particular question. Um, you can also add comments here, which students, I think they get notifications for these kinds of comments. Um, and then again, once you put in a grade, you can update scores. Um, and this is the grade of the whole exam over here on the right. So this is the question. 
these comments and this grade are about the whole exam. Any questions so far? Okay, I can't see you all because of how at the same time. So if you do have a question, feel free to just, uh, you know, turn out, unmute yourself and speak up. That would be great. I'll also watch the chat. Too. Okay, so quizzes work that way. When you finish, um, let's submit this. It's going to tell me now that this is number four of four. I've graded two of four. It's gonna stay that way because the Ambroses were bad students and didn't submit, didn't submit quizzes. So there's only two to grade, right? Um, so you'll see here that if we go to Glenn or Adrian, there's nothing here and there's nothing here. So um, that's gonna stay that way. But if we go back to our, um, sorry, I need to move this window. If we go back to our um, dashboard, you'll see that that thing has gone off of my to-do list because all of the available uh, questions have been graded. So um, one of the things I really like about Canvas is it helps me stay on top of student grading. If something shows up late and I log into Canvas, suddenly it's back in my to-do list, right? Like I can always tell there's, a, there's something that I, uh, that I should be interacting with. Um, while we're talking about quizzes, let's go actually look at the quizzes and how that got set up. Okay. So when you set up a quiz, you have all of your sort of beginning stuff at the top, right? So what are we going to call this quiz? This is our curriculum quiz. And then, you know, uh, is it gonna, gonna have an, be in a group, right? Do you have reading quizzes? Do you have um, uh, unit one? Do you have, however you set up your grade book, right? If you wanna tie this to a group, that's what that is. Um, and then you can say, students can take this more than once or they can only have five minutes for it or um, let them see their responses. And when they're done, let them see the correct answers. Um, all right, have you all seen this assignment group thing so far in Canvas? This is a thing that's on everything you, every assignment you build in Canvas. If you want to, you can set different assignment deadlines for groups of students. So if I wanted to say, um, for Glenn and Adrian, this is now due on, on Friday, right? Um, and, but for Anne, this is due, we have an exception, it's going to be due next Monday. Then you can set this up for every assignment if you want to give students different deadlines. It will show up in their to-do calendars that way, based on what you put in. Okay. Once we go up here then to questions, so details, questions, this is where we can edit and put in new questions. So um, we're asking our question, what is a sea change in the OAW system? We have our possible answers here. The correct one is marked. You can change that. Um, and then if you want to here, you can put comments in if students choose this one. And you wanna say, you might think that because a new class is, it seems like a big deal, but a new class is an A change in the UIW system. And then if a student chooses that, they'll get that feedback. Again, by clicking on this, um, this thing here at the end, this little box. Any questions at this point? I've been sort of moving through this pretty quickly. And just when you're done, make sure you click update question. That's a save. Anne, is that a hand? Yeah, that was a question. You're muted. It's, no, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't think he can hear us. That answers. That makes sense because he didn't hear me either. Yeah, he didn't hear me. Jacob, you is your speaker on? I cannot hear Anne. Just a second. Can you hear anybody, Jacob? No, I can. Sorry. Go ahead. 
Um, sure. So, and this is actually back a screen, and this is a little different, but I'm going to ask anyway. Yeah. The different uh, the the assignment groups that happens in the grade book. You can create different assignment groups. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I noticed when I was doing something, normally when you pull stuff down in Canvas, there's often a space to add a new, and there wasn't one when you're in an individual assignment. So I'll just, I'll make a note that I need to go into the grade book to do yeah, that. So that is one place you do need to make the thing ahead of time. Yep. Okay. Eilish. Uh, I missed where the button was for the comments box. Okay, so on the individual questions, um, when you're editing it, these things here, allow you to give comments, these little boxes right underneath, that if you want it to give an auto feedback comment, if a student chooses a multiple choice or whatever, yeah, you can have just type that in here and click save. Yeah, but the button itself is higher up. It's this little box here. Oh, okay. See Thanks. how it opens up into that? Yeah, thank you. Sure. And you can choose right and wrong, right, with the green, with the various colors here. But so right now it's telling me this is a possible answer, right? Um, and that this is the correct answer. So that's those colors, red, green, etc. Great. Okay. Other than that, I think the setup is pretty similar to um, to how uh, the um, Blackboard was set up. So you can add a new question, you can add a new group. Once you have groups of questions where you can say, um, of this group of questions, give the students four of them, right? You can put 10 questions in there and have it choose four, right? If you say, pick, if I have 10 questions here, pick four questions, each one of them is going to be worth two points, right? Um, then once I do that, I can just take a question and drag it into the group once it's created and it will, I have to create the group first. Just drop it on top and now this question is in that group. It's just like your desktop. Or you can, add a, a question to the group directly with the little plus sign, right? Of any of the normal sorts. Okay, cancel all this. Any questions about quizzes and grading at this point? When you make comments in there, it should go straight into the, the students should be able to see all of that. Their grades should go straight into the grade book. It's all pretty, and the student will get a little ping that says, you have a new grade that shows up. Um, okay, let's go back to this. And let's look at a different kind of assignment. So if you're grading a more of a paper assignment, right? Let's find the one I submitted. Um, oh, I forgot to clear out my previous grades. That's okay, we'll just add. So this is my disputation assignment that I give and you'll see that I use a rubric and I'll show you how to put a rubric in with this, which means I can just click in these things and change by, uh, I can put comments on my various things and I can change my points over here. Let me just drag this over so you can see more. Um, so if you use rubrics, it's a pretty simple, just leaving comments and assigning your points per rubric. And when you save that, it should update into this grade, which is the final grade. So you just wanna make sure that that's happened, right? This is the grade that's going to your grade book. Um, and then again, submit will, We'll add that to your grade book and you can go back and forth between the people in your things, just like with the quizzes. Now, if you wanna make comments on the um, piece itself, as you go, you have a couple of different options. This is a point comment. Um, if you wanna say, I wanna say, um, you can just add a little comment at a point. 
you can highlight something. Uh, and if you want to make comments on that highlight, you can do that. You can type text here um, if you want, right? Uh, you can strike things out if you are someone who edits for your students. Um, so these are very much like the uh, Adobe Acrobat things. And then this is a little drawing brush. And I'm going to show you this in a second in the... Um, when I show you the iPad app, um, this is not real useful unless you are working with a stylus. So I've been told that one of in the next round of computer refreshes, one of the options will be a laptop that has a stylus for writing on the screen. Uh, you may want to grade that way. Um, I really like taking my iPad to the coffee shop and grading with my stylus and acting like I'm writing on papers. Um, and that's what that's for. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but again, you're just, you can comment in the paper, they have access, all of that gets saved and they can see it. You can make comments either globally or in your rubric, if you have a rubric. Um, and if they submit more than one document, it will show up here. So you can click through those various documents. Hey, Jacob, yes, I, uh, my attention wandered a little bit. Show us, show me again how to create that rubric. Or where oh, I haven't started. gotten there yet. I just showed you how to, how to use the rubric once you've put it in. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you want to create a rubric, we go to the assignment, right? Um, and we're going to edit the assignment. So once you've created a rubric, um, it's really easy once you, uh, you uh, put this all in, where is the rubric? Let's just do a new assignment. That will be easier. Add an assignment. OK, here's my assignment. It's worth 100 points. It's in the assignments group. I'm going to show students a letter grade. They're going to give me a online submission with a file upload. You can choose, you know, if you have people give you, give you just paper, you can say no submission, and then you still have the thing in the grade book that you can go put stuff in. We'll say online. Um, I'm going to restrict out file types. I always do this because this keeps the student from submitting something that I can't open on my computer. So generally I do doc, docx, and PDF um, because those are the things I usually have, I students have write papers. If you're going to have them submit an um, Excel sheet, then you want to add that, right? Um, my problem is that students tend to assume like that I have weird you know, I get a word perfect document or I get a pages document or I get something that I have no way to open. If you're going to do plagiarism review, you turn that on here with all of its settings. Let's turn it in now. We're going to be using. And then again, that sort of require peer review stuff. I'm going to save this. And why is it not showing me? Did they move things? Sorry. Susan, I've lost the rubric thing. Um, you have to create the assignment first, and then right after you do that, it'll show you the rubric option. Thank oh, you. okay. Yeah, okay. So we create our assignment. This is the, this one I think we just made. Yep, okay. Um, let me take this off. Thank you, yeah. So once you've created it, thank you. Um, okay. you, can, you can add a rubric, and if you've already made it one, you can click find a rubric, and these are all of the rubrics I have apparently used. So in my sandbox, I have used my disputation rubric. So these are your courses. And once you just click that, it will add it. Hey, Jacob, so let's yes, say I have a rubric that I sort of like. So I decide I'm going to use that, uh -huh. edit it a little bit. If I save it under a new name, do I have my old version and my new version? Yep. Or so if we edit, we can edit this rubric. Um, or you can create a new one. Um, so if I want to give this a different title, it'll just give it a different title. I'll have both of them. Disputation mm -hmm. rubric two. Okay. Right. Um, and then you can edit each of the boxes. You can edit how many points each thing is worth, etc. Um, I, you can, you can set these up and I have not set this one up. Let me show you a new rubric. This is rather than editing an old one. Um, 
if you start from scratch with rubrics, right, you can have these ratings here in the middle. So if you want to, if you want to go through and um, you can add, you know, all of the points so that you just click rather than Um, so that you can, you know, yeah. some people like to make the whole box rubric. I like to basic, basically give myself categories that I make comments about, right? Um, mm -hmm. Does that make sense for what we're doing here? And then you can add more criteria, which is what they call the, the uh, rows. Um, and just over and over when you want to add something, you're looking for the plus sign, basically. Yep, like exactly. Sign. Yep. And the little pencils always edit and the trash cans always delete. Okay. Any questions about that so far? Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard. Um, we've looked at quizzes, we've looked at assignments. Um, that's really the two major kinds of things. Let me show you the app real quick, and then we can go back through these things. Let me share the screen, just a second. Oh, I, I might need permission to do this, let me see. No, to share your screen, you can share. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this app is called show you on my screen. It's called Teacher. You search for it under Canvas. Um, it has the same little Canvas logo. It's just yellow. Um, and you'll log into it just as you normally would with your UIW credentials. All the normal stuff comes up. Um, you've got your courses. Um, under To Do, and this is where I do almost all of this. Let me... Uh, Go back to that um, disputation that we were looking at. So when this comes up, you can do all the same things. You can highlight and make comments on it by double clicking. You can add text, you can strike out, et cetera. But the most useful thing here is this little um, uh, commenting thing. I like to give students comments in green. You can change that by clicking these colors or how thick, right? Um, and I can say here, and I'm noticing that my uh, thing is thicker, so I want to um, delete that and rewrite it. But again, it's just like writing on a paper, except that I can easily change what I've done. And I guess I want too light. Now, of course, if your students can't read your handwriting, that doesn't help you much, but um, that's this. And then again, at the bottom, you've got your grades. So your rubric shows up here. I'm gonna make this Four points. You can add comments by clicking on add comment, et cetera. And then it all totals up here and ends up in your grade book, just like everything else. It should all be pretty seamless. Any questions about that so far? Now, again, if you don't have an iPad or a computer with a stylus, this is not going to be as useful to you. Um, but if you do have access to one of those things, and as I said, I've been told that the next round of uh, computer updates will have an option with a, that'll fold flat with a stylus, um, then it's really, I really like taking this to the coffee shop like I used to with a pile of exams and just sitting there and grading with my stylus um, as if I have a pile of paper, that, but this time it can't blow away. Um, I find that a little bit comp less helpful on the quizzes. Let's look at those. Um, so if we look at the quizzes on here, 
um, just because the keyboard on the is not as easy to work with. It's a little bit um, it's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can grade just like you normally would. Give partial credit if you want, and it will and leave comments, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want to click on any file, it will download what the, whatever the student has upload has up has put in there as their submission, right? Hey Jacob, would you walk through the get to a, a paper aspect one more time? Sure. So let's start from like you just opened the app, okay? Yeah. So in the app, you've got two ways to get into it. On the one hand, you have your to do, which this is anything that's not been graded, right? And it, you'll notice that the things we've looked at already have disappeared. Yeah. Um, but if we go into the syllabus quiz. Um, this is something, something hasn't been graded here, so it, and then it went away once I submitted that last grade. If you want to find something you've already graded from the quiz or from the. So Jacob, before you go any place. Yes. Show me the screen that you first see when you come into the app. It will either show you this screen, which is courses, or can you see the bottom of my screen or is that cut off? Oh uh, yeah, I can see it. Course something and something. Yeah. Course to do an inbox. Yeah. Okay. So it will either show you this, which is courses, or it will show you the to do page. Okay. So you have you've got control over what you see when you come into the app. Yep. And so okay. and you can just go back and forth. Inbox is again email with students, right? So yeah. um, those are the three options in the app. It's much there's fewer things that you can it's you can't really build a course in the app, right? Um, mm -hmm. So if you're on to do, you can go straight to something that needs grading. Um, and again, I can make comments here if I wanted. Um, I can assign, I can type things um, and at the bottom I can add a grade just with the little slider. And then that's done and it's gonna go off of my to-do list once it's, oh, this is another one. Okay, we'll grade this one and it will also go off my to-do list. The other way into something, if you wanna look for something that's already been graded, is you go into the course from courses. Okay. And then if you go to the kind of thing it is, either quizzes or uh, I wanna look at assignments, I wanna go back to that um, disputation under submissions here to the right, I can see everything that's been submitted. Okay, so that was just the same course navigation um, column that you would see on a full screen. Yeah, it's just set up a little bit differently because of the right. format. Yeah. yeah, so here, because of the narrow format, you're just seeing the course navigation, you're not seeing the global navigation. Yep, exactly. Okay, gotcha. Any questions about the app? It's, it should be pretty, I think, if, you know, it works the same as most other apps. So, um, real quick, me, um, on the global navigation, we have it on our computer. You, we see the grades as one of the choices on the menu, but on your app that you had up right now, it wasn't there. So when I'm, I'm teaching in summer too. So I, if I go grade, sometimes I'll just go to the grades on the, on the menu. And then uh -huh. I just do. I can I can go to a column of assignments, a specific column of assignments, and then I do speed grader, and it'll grade all the ones that are there. But on the app, I didn't see that as a choice. I didn't see grades like the grade book as one of the items. Uh, let me show it again, and I will just a second. The iPad is really concerned that I know that we are sharing my screen. It, it takes forever. Here we go. Okay, so from courses, um, I guess you're right. Um, I guess I've never gone looking for that. Using the app, um, I, I like it because, you know, like you said, at mobility, I'd go to a recliner and do some grading maybe, but yep. but, the, 
the when I had on the computer on the full computer PC, uh, I like to just click on grades and I and I can scroll and see all the columns and see missing items and zeros and late items, but I can't do that with the app. I notice I'll have to. Yeah. So the closest thing you're going to get to that is from the if you go into a course, and then you click on people on the app, and you ch you can go through the people and it will say this they're missing these things. Here's a good, here's, you'll see. Okay, so close reading one, 99 over 100. You've got all of the grades per student, but you're right, there isn't a good, there doesn't seem to be a a, mod, a table form of everybody in, on one page. And so it'll say what they've submitted, how many were late, how many things are missing, and all of their grades by person. But you're right, you'd have to scroll through each person on the app to do that. And that's, I hadn't noticed that before. Um, thank you for pointing that out. That's. And thank you for going back to showing me that. Yeah, we're all discovering this. Okay, so my guess is most of us will spend, sorry, I, I haven't been watching the chat. Is there anything we need to? Yeah, so in the grade book, thank you, Michael. If we go to the, um, let me share my big screen again. If we're in the um, the web version, you can um, go into a do that same thing. We're in the course, and you click on grades, and now we see in this table form uh, what everybody has submitted for each things. If we hadn't, if this weren't here, um, so if if I had taken out that, it, it would tell me that there is something to be graded as opposed to nothing submitted, right? So that little paper says, you have something that needs grading, as opposed to a dash mark, which says they haven't submitted anything. Now, one thing about Blackboard that I don't like, um, there are not a lot of them, but one of them is that there is not currently a way for a faculty member to submit a paper for a student. So if a student emails you a paper, you can click on, you can grade it and enter a grade here but you can't upload the paper for the student at this point, the way that you could in Blackboard. Um, so I generally ask students to please submit it through, through Canvas, um, but you, know, you may just decide it's easier to grade on paper and put in the grade book. Um, the only difficulty there is it doesn't preserve the paper or, the, or the, your comments uh, for the future the way that it would otherwise. Yes, so going back, you can pull course rubrics from other courses. Um, when you go in to find a, a rubric, uh, um, you the first column will be the courses, and then the second column that comes up will be the rubrics in that courses. So if you know that you built a rubric in your intro to sociology course, just click on your intro to sociology course in that rubrics page, and then the rubrics you use there will come up, and you can bring it over into the new course. Shall I show you that? That's pretty. Um, yeah, let's look at that. Yeah. Uh, dashboard, come on. Render sandbox. Okay, so under assignments, we go to our test assignment that we just built. Um, take this off. And we're going to add a rubric. So here we can find a rubric. And again, this first is all of the courses you have access to. So I know that I have a rubric in my, or maybe looks apparently there's a University of the Incarnate Word rubric that somebody built. Um, and this is it. It is not a very helpful rubric, but we could use this rubric and it will show up. Um, and then I can edit it further if I want to. Okay, I can, you know, add my criteria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.
that was pretty quick, but again, I think this should be, this is, is probably one of the simpler things in Canvas. Um, it's one of the things I really like about it um, is especially this uh, to-do page here. Um, and again, if you set up that calendar right with the when things are due for students, when students are in Canvas, it will show up as due dates in their personal calendar for all of their classes. So if you say this assignment is due on this date, it's gonna show up in the student's calendar. If you say, um, I had a class last spring where students had to turn in four assignments over the course of the semester and they all signed up for stuff. Um, I went ahead and put that in with all of the different deadlines. So number one was due on different dates for everybody. Number two was due, it took me about a half an hour. But once it was in, the students had it on their calendars. And so therefore they, they got the reminders from Canvas and it was a really, they asked me less often when things were due. Um, that was a really helpful thing, that uh, differing assignments dates thing, uh, which again, if we go into our assignments and this is true for quizzes, this is true for anything that you're doing, um, just all the way at the bottom under edit, you can make multiple assignment dates by adding add and then choosing who it's who it's due for when. Yeah, as I've played around with Canvas, I, I have uh, become more and more uh, aware of the power of that due date. I mean, that is the doorway into your calendar and their calendar. Um, and Blackboard had a pretty lame uh, calendar, so I never much thought about it. And so this is just, I think, a a really nice um, upgrade. Hey, Kim. Yes, Bonnie. So, if you, when you're when you're not to, when you're not doing everything online and you're doing it part in class, and so everything's not submitted on through online, is is the way to get it into the grade book is to just put a placeholder in the in one of the modules and just say no submission. Is that the way you get it in, or is there another easier? Is that the only way to get it in? So um, yeah, so it's in this submission type box. Where so it says no submission, you either, either on paper or no what submission. What you probably want is on paper if okay. they're handing it to you in class. Oh, okay, so that they don't think that, like if you put an exam in there and the exam's gonna be in class, you would put paper. Exactly, yeah. And then it goes into your grade book. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. And you can but still assign a rubric to it and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanna have a stack of papers in front of you, and grade on your computer, right? You can have the rubric in the computer and enter all the comments on the rubric for the on paper exam. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I teach anatomy and physiology and when you say about 50 questions, I'm not gonna. Yeah, sure. Yeah, do a rubric. <laughs> yeah but if you, if you wanna grade on paper, you just put it on paper here and then it shows up in your grade book. And you can just and put then your you grades can, in. Then you can just enter the grades. Exactly. Yep. In the here, let me show you what that looks like. What are we in here? This is our. You enter them in the grade book, right? Yeah, I don't, don't want to. Yeah. Um, let me cancel out of this. Uh, yeah. So it, then you'll just have a column that looks like this. And you can just put them in. Yep. Okay. Uh, and if you hit enter, it'll go to the next one. Right. Okay. Yep. Jacob, let's kind of go back to an assignment. Um, okay. And walk through the various uh, submission things. Um, so. Assignments. Assignments. We're going to add a new assignment. Okay. okay. So we're going to call this uh, um, first paper. And again, I suggest here in this box that you copy over whatever you're, um, whatever you're telling the students about what this paper should be, right? Yeah, so whatever so the, the syllabus text, for instance, or yeah. The syllabus text, or if you give them a, a description that says, you know, in this paper, in no more than five pages, double spaced, please respond to the following question, whatever, that will be here, right? And then right. if you put that here, um, then that's gonna show up when the student logs in, they're going to be able to find it easily when they're uploading it, they see it again and they might, you know, it, it might save you some problems. Um, you decide that however many points it is, what group. Oh, and I do have a create group here. 
Maybe it's just for tests it doesn't show up. Okay, so um, you can create a group. Uh, we're gonna call this group um, weekly papers. And I want this to show up as, you know, letter grade, but I'm gonna put points in. Um, students are gonna submit either no submission, right? So maybe that's a uh, uh, participation grade, right? Has no submission. So if Online. I want this, I want a column in my grade book for participation, yeah. there's nothing to submit. So I create it as an assignment, but I do no submission. And then when I want to give those participation points, I just go in there and manually click yep. them in. Absolutely, exactly. Online gives you these options. How do you want students to be able to submit it? And you can say more than one. You can tell students, okay, you can submit a file upload or a media recording if you wanna um, put, upload a video or a URL. You can just give me a URL to your Dropbox folder or um, I don't know what student annotation is. I haven't used that one. Does anyone know what the student annotation option is? If you have text entry, they're going to get a box that looks like this. So if you wanted them to log into the system and type up a reflection in the system, they'll have basic editing, bold, italic, underline, et cetera, right? But it'll just be that sort of web box. So let's say if I like end my class session with a one minute paper, yep. this might be a nice way to do that. Some kind of short thing. Um, yeah, you could tell them, log into Canvas right now, find today's assignment, and you're going to do a one-minute paper here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Every time I bring this up. And Jacob. You get, oh, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear okay. you. New um, environment, so it sounds a little different. Um, the student annotation is you basically upload something you want the student to annotate and turn back in. So you've got a human body diagram you want them to label or you have um, a paper you want them to mark up you add that when you check the box great thank you also jacob yes you're you're right about the um about st student groups and us uh, and quizzes you can't assign quizzes to student groups but you can assign quizzes to separate sections if you have cross-listed sections inside of a course. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, then with if you if you do file uploads, it gives you this option of restrict upload file types. I strongly suggest doing that. Um, whatever actual kinds of things you are willing to accept. You can say how many times should students be able to actually upload something? Um, I don't usually do this, but some people like to say you can only submit one thing. Um, if you're going to use turn it in, click the box on turn it in and you're going to get some new options there. Etc. So and just then, to recap, this is all on the assignment page and we're just scrolling is, down, right? This is all on the assignment page. I'm just scrolling down. Um, you can assign assignments to groups if you want to set up groups in your in your class. Just click this is a group assignment. You can require peer reviews. Um, and then again, this is that assignment deadline thing, right? And when you're done, remember one of the most important things on Canvas is to publish the uh, to publish the new assignment or students will not see it. So save saves it so that you can come back and work on it. And the other way to publish something, I'm just gonna save this for now and I'll show you the other way, is up here at the top, publish or unpublish. Or um, if you've put it on your, I don't know if I put things on modules on this page, this class. Yep, okay. So um, I can publish or unpublish things on the module. And one small thing that people get into trouble with on Canvas sometimes is, um, they publish the assignment, but not the module, and it still won't show up. 
You need to make sure you have all green check marks here of things that you want people to see. So if I, yeah. Um, you can also add things directly here. So if I wanna add an assignment, I can um, add our test assignment and see, so I can publish it here, but this still isn't gonna be visible to students until I publish the module. So this happens to me all the time. Students say, I can't find the whatever. And I open up my uh, Canvas and discover that I never published the assignment or I never published the, um, the module. If you publish the assignment, but not the module, students will be able to find it through the assignments tab on their thing. But I do everything through modules. It's easier for students. I do it by, by the week or by the day, depending on the class. You can set that up however you want. Yeah. So Jacob, just in th thinking of kind of the order in which I might proceed, yep. uh, I might go to the assignments area, create my assignment, scroll down, choose all those options that I want and ignore the ones I don't want, uh, save it and then move it over to the, and then go to the module and just upload it to the module. So you can, you can absolutely do that or you can, um, uh, in the module, go back to my modules. You can also just add something directly to the module by clicking create assignment here. Okay. And then when you're done, it will show up here. Or if, if, I, wanna... if I click create assignment there, Jacob, I would go uh, behind the scenes. I'm going back to the um, assignment area and I'm seeing everything, huh? Yep. Uh, um, that whole Well, scroll. it's going to make it first. And then when you click on it, it will take you back to this page where you can set up all the stuff about it. Okay. So it will make an unpublished blank assignment with whatever title, and then you have to click on it to actually make it look like what you want. So or if I create it in assignments, yep. save it, and, and you know that sort of compulsive person that likes to do things one step at a time, then I go to the module and I add let's say the assignment I just created, I can take care of all the publishing right there inside the module, correct? Yep, and so then it's gonna show up here under whatever your, mm -hmm. so if we choose, I don't have any files on this course, but we, these are the assignments I have, I can just add it to that and click add item and it will go there. Okay. I have a question. I'm co-teaching a class with another faculty member and we haven't fully decided how much percentage each assignment and each quiz is going to be worth yet because we don't know the exact number of quizzes we're having. Yep. So when we do finalize that, is there any central place that we can assign percentages or do we have to go one by one by one? So I would encourage you in that case to use groups in your grade book. Because if you know that the quizzes, if you assign all of your quizzes, you can make all of your quizzes out of 100 points, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And then if the quizzes are in, um, are in group, you have a quizzes group, right? Um, this is not where I wanna be. Let me add a new. Um, so this unnamed quiz, right? I'm going to make it part of the assignments group. Oh, this is what we ran into before. It won't let me on quizzes. All of these edits that you're gonna make are gonna be in the assignments page. It's So it's always it. under assignments that you yeah, make Yeah, the assignments page builds your grade book for you. Okay, so if we go to assignments, mm -hmm and we add a group, and this is gonna be my quizzes group. Then Julie, once, if you add all of your quizzes to your quizzes group, at the end of this, of the, uh, whenever you've, you've figured it out, you can say quizzes are worth 25% of the grade and it mm -hmm. will do all the math for you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And then we will have some um, clinical reflection submissions that are 
um, evaluated as pass fail, but they I, do not com contribute in a numerical way to the final grade. So they could be grouped all together as well, yep. correct? Yeah, and then you just say thank that you. that group is worth 0% of the grade. Yeah, thank you. And Groups are great for things you do repetitively and you don't know exactly how many of them you're gonna have. If you just add those to the gr same group, you can say the group is worth this percentage of the grade, right? And mm -hmm. that is... Um, and then will it give me an option as Blackboard did? And if you can just answer this, I'll kind of play with it and figure it out on my own. But it'll give an, um, an option as Blackboard did that within that group, if that group is worth say 25%, we can weight um, the value of each one to equal 25%. Or no? Are they all weighted equally? They're all weighted equally, and um, the whole group will take twenty five percent. Actually, no. You can change the weight within the group. Change how many points each one within the group. And so within the group of quizzes, if you have one that's weighted that really has more weight than other quizzes, you make that a thirty point quiz, and all your others are five point or something. And then when that whole course group gets factored in as a certain percentage of your overall course grade, that weighting is already done within the I, quiz. I was under the impression that everything within one group was ultimately going to have the same point value. So if you had seven um, five-point quizzes, they would be in one group, and that 30-point quiz would be in another group. Am I wrong? You so, could set it up either way, I think, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. So your your assignments can be worth different points within a group, but they will be just averaged together. So I can have a 15 point, a 25 point, 100 point, however many points, right? But it's just an average. All, all of those scores are going to be averaged in the group. And then the group is going to be indicated for a weighted percentage that you choose. Okay. Thank you. I misunderstood. Thank you. Hey, Jacob, can you, are you going to show folks how to weight the assignment groups? Melissa, can I ask one question? Um, I can. It wasn't really a thing I prepared since I wasn't, I, but yes, let me, um, sorry, it's been a while since I've looked at this. I was not thinking about it and getting ready for today. So, um, so you, you're actually going to stay over on that assignments page to do the weights, everything. Wanna, that actually, Melissa, since you are currently, do you want to drive for a second and show us this? That would be great. Um, okay, hold on. I don't have a course, so give oh, me that's one okay. I can do it. I just... <laughs> um, I, I have several to pick from, so let me just pull one up. Let's see. I have access to everyone's courses, but they're not mine, right? All right, so here we go. You should be able to see my screen, and I've got to pick a course that has something in it. That would be good. Okay, so we'll have to use our imagination just a little bit. But if you are on your assignments page, everything that you're managing is from this area. So I've got my different groups. And no matter how many points things are worth, they're just going to be averaged. And then up here in the top right corner, there's a three dot menu. I'm going to click that to click assignment groups wait. And then once I check this box, it's going to give me my options. And I can say, you know, I want 75% for this one, 5% for this one, and the other 20% for that one, and click Save. Then you'll see that indicated for each group. Melissa? Mm -hmm. uh, so just to clarify, if I have four quizzes and one of them's worth 10 points and one of them's worth 20 and the other is worth 15, then each one of them counts a third of the percentage, right? Or no? It's gonna be 15 plus 10 plus 20 divided by three, the average, average. just a straight just average. average. Okay. And then if you say you want that average to be 10% of the grade, that's with the weight. Okay. But it's gonna treat them as points within the group, right? Yes. So if I have one 100 point assignment and two five point assignments, It'll be 100 plus 5 plus 5 divided by 110. I do 
I do believe so. I've that never actually point. seen the math, but yeah, it's just a straight average. On points though, not on totals, right? Like not on percentage. It's not gonna average 100%. If I get one point on the fives, right? It's not gonna average 100% plus with 20% twice. It doesn't do anything with percentage it's at all. all. It's all based on the point number you enter per creating an assignment or quiz. Yeah, that is my understanding too. So I'm glad we're on the same page. So if you want them to count equally, you need to make them all the same number of points. Yes. That's correct. But Bonnie, if the way you do it now is like your whole class averages to 100 and you just distribute it yourself, like a quiz is worth five and the test is worth 20 and in the end it's 100 points. No, I don't do that. Oh, okay. I was going to say you can still do that. You just then don't assign percentages to the group. Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I don't I do not do it that way because I have about 16 quizzes, but I haven't made them 100 points because some of them you know, some of them have more questions than others. And then the students go, well, why is this one 10 points off and this one five points off? You know how they get about stuff like that. There was a question in the chat to, can you remove a group of assignments when it has been created or just the individual assignments? So um, as long as students haven't taken any of the assignments, actually done the work, your delete option is gonna be there for the whole group. And when you do that, it will prompt you, what do you wanna do? Do you want to delete them all or do you want to move them somewhere else before you delete it? So yeah, you do have choices. Once students have submitted things, it will not allow you to delete an assignment, however. That's correct. So my question, <clears throat> sorry, my question, Melissa, was because when I did transfer from Blackboard into the Canvas and I have so many different groups in there, I couldn't find a way to delete those. The one that came from transfer from Canvas. So that's what I was asking. Oh, yeah, there should be a delete option, even even if it transferred in from Canvas, if you're on the assignments page, the option to delete should still be there. Should be Maybe under those, the three included. little dots to the right of the, mm -hmm. so if we go to imported assignments here on Melissa's page, you see in the gray box all the way on the right side, there's those three dots, that's going to be your so, menu, that should be for, where it is. Yeah, to, I, de I to, to delete. delete. But when I tried to delete, it didn't delete. I don't know if it was my my uh, connection or it just that it wouldn't delete if it was imported. That's, that's why I was so asking. It, it, it depends sometimes. Um, I, I, sometimes I go to a page and I go to an area and I want to delete something and I don't have that option. And I have had to actually go into an assignment to delete mm -hmm. it. So for I'm not sure why that is, but okay. um, you open up the actual assignment and click edit mm -hmm. and then this option right here will have the delete what? and that oh. it might have it might have something yeah. to do with the the student preview like if you've gone to the student preview and it's registered that there's been some activity mm -hmm. I, i'm not positive though but i have seen that thank you and you can't delete you can't really delete much from, an, from a module at all. That's correct. Um, everything that's in your module, it's just asking you, do you want to take it out of the module or leave it here? So it's a either or, but it still lives in the area it was created, whether it was a discussion, an assignment, or a file, you know, whatever else it was. So I, I did not mean to hijack this session. No, I, um, I really Jacob. Thank you. I, it would have taken me an extra couple of minutes to remember where that was. So I really appreciate it. And that's really true across the board for Canvas. If you don't do it regularly, you're not going to remember. So just keeping your basics in mind, you know, you're looking for the three dot menu, you're looking for the pencil to edit. It's all the same similar buttons and just finding where you're at. Yeah, and when in doubt, go to the menu item for the kind of thing you're trying to work on, right? So if you want to add, delete, remove assignments, go to the assignments tab. Um, if you want to, you know, deal with your mo your modules is really just like how do, how are students going to see this, right? When you build something in assignments or in quizzes, it lives in sort of that folder, and what you're really adding on modules is a link to it so that students don't have to go hunting. 
And I'll use this as a great time to plug the help button, right? So Canvas guides, if you're really stuck and you wanna know really how something works, your link here is gonna take you to the documentation that's line by line for every single feature. And then of course there's the support hotline to call 24 seven or you can chat with them um, if you're stuck. That is something that can be very helpful. And also just if you Google Canvas, how do I whatever, <laughs> almost always the first search result is going to be the actual part of the um, help webpage, right? And so Google is an amazing help desk. Any other questions at this point? Yeah, Jacob, how do you change the points once you've made a quiz, if you wanna change the points? Do you have to do it on each individual question? Um, I believe with quizzes, yes, the number of, the, the point total will be based on what you've given to each question. Um, mm -hmm. The With assignments, you can just change it for the assignment since there's just the single, how much this is worth. Um, but with quizzes, because you've assigned points to each question or each question group, you'll have to um, you have to tweak it there. Um, I and again, this is just me. I'm a theologian. Math is not my strong suit, right? I tend to make everything out of 100 and then um, just do groups in the grade book to make the math work out at the end. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Last call for questions. We are repeating this again on Wednesday and on Friday, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if you wanna come back, I see that Sister Alicia is planning on it. Um, we will gladly see you again. Uh, but, and again, I the, the best thing about the, the speed grader is I think how simple it is. So I really hope that um, just play, play around with it and you will figure it out pretty quickly, I think. As long as you remember that three dots is a menu. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm going to end the meeting for us.